And I feel like this is what truly got me the grade nine. So what I'm gonna do is actually demonstrate this method on a question that came up in my paper. So when you first see this question, what do you see? The graph that looks absolutely and utterly complicated. I'm thinking, oh, what am I gonna have to do? Am I gonna have to work out the equation of the line? Am I gonna have to do this? Let's break it down, okay? Let's get straight into it. So in 2018, I got a grade nine in GCSE maths. This was an absolute shocker for me because I went from absolutely hating maths and being the worst at maths in year seven to getting one of the highest grades in my year in year 11. This was of course not easy and I really had to teach myself how to revise maths because I feel like no one actually teaches you. So I'm gonna let you know all of my tips and tricks into how I actually got this grade nine. So before we start, be sure to give a big thumbs up and comment down below and subscribe for more content like this. And watch this video to the end to be able to find out how to answer any question they throw at you in GCSE maths. Okay, so this video is gonna be split into three parts. We're going to go into why people lose marks, how to perfect your exam technique and also how to be prepared for any kind of question they throw at you. So let's move on to losing marks. So obviously the reason that people fail maths is because they lose marks on the exam. What you first need to understand is that maths GCSE is basically a game. It's literally a game. The aim of the game is to score the most points under time conditions. So if we think about it this way, the way that you get a grade 9 is to figure out why you're losing marks and to prevent that from happening. So let's talk about the top reasons that people lose marks in maths GCSE. So the first and the most important reason which I'm sure you've experienced before is because you don't understand the question. If you don't understand the question that doesn't necessarily mean that you're bad at maths or that you're stupid because a lot of people think that a lot of people think because they don't understand most questions because they don't know how to answer most questions that they're just not good at maths but like it doesn't mean that it just means that you haven't prepped enough before the exam it means that you haven't seen enough similar questions so when you see this question you're completely thrown off because you think that is something that you haven't done and you think that you don't have the knowledge to answer that question but you actually probably do. Maths is objective this means that you're either wrong or right which makes it much easier to improve your grade as opposed to a subjective subject such as English. It is also very limited in what they can ask. They can only ask you what's in the specification or what's in the textbook so you have to remember that everything on the paper is something that you've learned. At the end of the day you want to be exposed to so many questions that when you see a question on that paper you already start to know what to do, you already start to know what topic it requires and you are finding it much easier to answer questions. And the way that you can train your brain into doing this is to practice maths every single day. And that sounds crazy, but if you feel like you're not naturally good at maths, the only way that you can improve is by practice. So what I recommend for this is something called the Corbett Maths 5 a day. It's basically this website by Corbett Maths and they give you five questions to complete every single day. And I think these questions are randomized, so it means that you're not prepared and it kind of stimulates the exam experience, but only for five questions. So this definitely encourages you to do it daily because it's not too much, it's not too overwhelming. And as well as this, I really recommend that you search topics that you're unfamiliar with or that you find really hard, that you're always losing marks on Google. And then you search the exam board and you can find a booklet or PDF on this topic so that you can focus your revision on one topic. One major tip that I did that motivated me to do maths every single day was to go to school early. This sounds crazy again but 30 minutes a day in the morning is not that bad. Like do it in the morning then you have it over and done with for the day. You can do whatever you want for the rest of the day. It just helps to reinforce your math skills and your thinking skills. So honestly, I would recommend it. And I feel like this is what truly got me the grade nine. So another thing that's very, very important to realize is that when you're revising maths and you're enjoying it, it means that you aren't revising. I'm sorry to say it, but when you're revising maths and you're really enjoying it, you're really finding everything easy, it means that you aren't studying properly because at the end of the day, when you're revising maths, you need to understand that pain is actually good. That uncomfortable feeling is what you need to get used to because it's better to feel this feeling whilst you're revising as opposed to the exam. When you have that feeling, it means that you're experiencing something new. It means that you're testing your brain and that you're expanding your knowledge so that you can be prepared for more questions. So yeah, just make sure that when you're revising, you're not doing stuff that you already know. You're not doing stuff that you find easy because this is not gonna help you. The aim of revising maths is to make sure that you're familiar with all of the topics because a lot of the questions in the actual paper that you get in the summer combine a lot of topics. So that's why it catches people out because they're not thinking about that. One of my favorite revision guides for maths is the ones by Pearson. I'm not sure if they have them for every single exam board. I did at Excel and I found them amazing. Like, 
they really summarized each topic and then they put a little question on the bottom and i think they put the answers on the back it just helps you to quickly practice maths on the go like wherever you are and i just really recommend it i think it also gives you a free online revision guide so definitely check it out if you have time if you use these flashcards or any other flashcards or revision guide you should just use this to target your weak spots you should not be going over things that you understand so let's move on to the second reason why people lose marks in maths GCSEs and this is such an annoying reason because I'm sure we've all experienced it but it's when you make silly mistakes this was my ultimate nemesis in maths like every single time I really really thought that I got a really good grade I, was, I really thought I did something but then I get the exam back and my grade is so bad and then I look through it it's because I made the dumbest mistakes ever and it's so annoying and here is my surefire ways to avoid making these mistakes because they're so easily avoidable so my first tip is to read the question this sounds so obvious but when I say read the question I mean read that question you better read that question at least two times before actually attempting it underline the keywords underline the key numbers that they give you because at the end of the day all of these worded questions they put so much rubbish in them just to like throw you off just to get you like sidetracked look at what the question is actually asking you and the units that they're giving you and the numbers that they're giving you because this is what actually matters when you're solving when you read the question properly you can start to see what they're suggesting the topic might be for that question and then sometimes this can help you to see what equation you might have to use for this question another way to make sure you don't make these silly mistakes is to double check your work now at each step even when you are adding and subtracting things double check that you did them properly because like it sounds really stupid now but in the exam under the pressure in that hot summer hall it's so easy to make silly mistakes and get overconfident and then lose marks so double check at each point of your working out because if you double check it now as opposed to waiting until the end and just flipping through it you can truly see what you are doing and you can truly see where mistakes are being made another thing you want to do is to triple check your answer when you finish a question look at your answer and make sure that it looks realistic like it seems realistic to you let's say you're calculating an angle in a triangle and you're getting over 180 you must know that you did something wrong like you did something catastrophically wrong for you to get that answer so just be sure to look at your answers and to make sure they're realistic in the context of the question now let's move on to exam technique which is very very important in math so let's imagine this you've put in all of the work you've done all of the exam papers you've done the, all of the exam questions you're ready for this so then you enter the hall you sit down you've got your pencil in one hand you've got your exam paper in the other and you freeze you just freeze all of this work all of your five years of secondary school has been building up to this and you just freeze in the exam and you don't even understand the first question what do we do to avoid this and what do we do to perfect our exam technique let me show you so first things first if you see a question in your exam paper and you have no idea what they're talking about like you're completely confused and you've been spending three to five minutes even just looking at it and you haven't even touched the paper with your pen it's time to move on I'm, I'm here to tell you that it's time to move on. Fold the edge of the paper, move on to the next question. Because I told you, maths is a game, you can't be wasting your time on things that you're not gonna answer. There's always time at the end. If you use this method, you'll always have time to the end to go back to it. When you fold this paper, it acts as a reminder that you have to go back to this page before the end of the time. So just remember when you're flicking through and you see this folded paper, you need to go back to it and you need to try that question again. Let's move on to when you somewhat understand the question, what should you do then? So what you should do is what I call it the breakdown method. This means that you break down the question to the absolute, 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 absolute basics. Like I'm telling you, like you see a square, you need to think okay so all of these have the same sides that's how basic I'm talking because as I told you before you've been taught everything in that paper it's just that they try to mask it they try to make it seem like it's something bigger than it actually is so you need to break it down so what I'm gonna do is actually demonstrate this method on a question that came up in my paper in 2018 Bear in mind, I haven't really revised GCSEs for like three years now, so I might be a bit rusty. I'm just showing you my exam technique in general, so let's get into it. So here's the question. First of all, when you first see this question, what do you see? The graph that looks absolutely and utterly complicated. It looks very confused and you're thinking, oh, what am I gonna have to do? Am I gonna have to work out the equation of the line? Am I gonna have to do this? Let's break it down, okay? So let's do what I said before. Let's read the question properly and underline the key points. So, what we have here, 
the shape is made from four identical squares what you should be thinking in your head okay so these must have the same size like the size must be the same length we already understand that okay because the square has the same length so now they're also saying that the sides of the square are parallel to the axes this means that they're in line with the axes there's no diagonal thing going on they're completely in line with the axes now they tell you the coordinates of point a which is here and then they tell you the coordinates of point B which is here. The thing that you actually want to aim for as your answer is where point C is. So let's look at everything that they actually gave us. So they told us that there's four identical squares, fair enough. They told us the coordinates of two points and now they want us to work out the coordinate of C. Okay so let's look at where C actually is in terms of squares because in this question, all we have is squares. They didn't give us any other information. So if you look at it from the x-axis, C is actually two squares in away from A. Can you see it? So we have one square, then we have another square. So it must be two squares away. And then if we look at it from the y-axis, C is actually two squares away from B. What we have to do first is to work out the length of one side of the square and then we can work out the answer basically. So let's work out the difference between the x coordinates of B and C to work out the overall length. So what we do here is 38 minus six because that's how you find a difference in any question. We get 32, we know that there's four identical squares. So if we divide 32 by four, that means that we'll get the length of one side. So 32 divided by four gives you eight. So now you know that the side of each square is eight. So let's work out the x coordinate. So to work out the x coordinate, as we said before, it is two squares away from A. So what we have to do is just add two squares worth to A. And two squares is eight plus eight. So we've got 16. Uh, let's add that to six. So then you get 22. So that's the answer for x. Now let's work out y. So we said that the y coordinate of c is two squares away from b. So all we have to do is minus two squares worth from 36. And then we get 20. So the answer is 22, 30. Very, very simple. All that required was literally basic maths, like just the knowledge that the square has equal sides. So when you see a question like this, don't be thrown off by all of the theatrics. Just think about it simply and use the knowledge that you have to answer the question. Now back to the tips. Once you've gone through the questions you can actually do, make sure you go back to the questions that you folded over because these are still worth marks, whether you can complete them or not. So for these questions where you're very confused, all you wanna do is work out as much as you can. Even if that means that you can't get to the answer, work with what you have and try to get as much marks as you can. So what you wanna do again is break down the question. You have all of the knowledge. You just wanna break it down until you can answer something. So let me give you an example. Let's say we have a really long question, not really short to do, but we see this. We see that there's a distance of 1,000 meters and we see a speed of 50 meters per second. Alarm bell should be ringing in your mind. You should be thinking about speed, distance, time that little triangle so you must know that from that you can work out the time so just work out the time and leave it at that if you have to because that's one extra mark that you just got from answering something that you know how to work out try to answer everything as much as you can try not to leave things blank because it just decreases your chances of getting a good grade finally when you're finished the questions what you have to do is look over the questions make sure you've completed everything double check you're working out and then you're good to go so let's move on to the final part of the video which is how to be prepared for any kind of question they might ask you in math gcse with everything that's been said the more you practice maths, the more you expose your brains to all of these different kinds of questions and the more likely you are to get similar questions on your exam paper. This will train your brain to recognize what you have to do from the question. When you see certain units, certain angles, certain shapes, your brain will naturally figure out what you have to start doing. Think of maths as a sport. You would not get better at basketball by reading books about basketball. You would get better by shooting hoops, practicing daily, playing games. That's how you would actually improve. Maths is the same thing. You can't just sit there, be passive and read the textbook and expect to be better at it. You have to constantly be doing maths questions. We have to remember an exam, especially when you're under so much stress and when you're scared and when you're nervous and you think that you can't do it, is that every single thing that is in that paper, you have been taught it. 
And if you haven't been taught it, because some teachers may not teach you everything, you've definitely practiced it if you've been practicing all this time. So when you're faced with this new question, you're really confused about what to do, just think about it. Just sit back and think about it. Don't even think about solving it. Think about what topic it's actually from. Once you figure that out, you can think about similar questions that you've done in the past that you've struggled with, and then it's probably gonna be something similar to that. So just remember that you're fully capable of answering all of the questions. It's just that the question is phrased in an odd way that you're not used to, but you can actually do it. You've got this, and good luck for your exams, guys. That's the end of the video, guys. I really hope it helped you. If it did, and you're not subscribed yet, I actually don't know what you're doing like you actually need to subscribe right now like comment and subscribe for more content like this and also comment down below if you want any other subjects because i really want to know what you guys want help on and then i'll make more videos and i'll see you guys next time bye